Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, I've heard this said, and maybe you've heard it too. There are two kinds of people in this world. Those who think there are two kinds of people in this world, <laughs> those who don't. Uh, we like naming things, don't we? We like to label them. Uh, I had the children this morning help me label things around the church. We've got uh, the altar, the candle, the prayer circle, the pulpit, the cross, the font. I even had a sign on me earlier. It fell off. <laughs> um, we like names for things. We like to know what they are. We want to make distinctions about them. We want to define what they are. The problem is when it comes to labeling people is it starts to go in kind of a, a, a different direction. Right? There's, there's unforeseen consequences to doing that. Yes, we're trying to make distinctions, perhaps, uh, but it sometimes goes the wrong way. Just for example, uh, how many people besides me, because I am, are left-handed? I know we have a number of lefties. Right. Lots of lefties. Did you know that in Latin, the word for left is sinister? <laughs> Tell me there's not a value judgment placed on that distinction. So we label things and we uh, see distinctions, we make divisions between us. Uh, maybe we should think about that. Uh, what, what are the divisions, say, between um, adults and children, and what value do we place on that? Or between men and women? Uh, or between people that uh, self-identify in the LGBTQ community, or people who are straight? Uh, or, and what kind of value do we, what distinctions do we make? What judgments do we make around that? Um, how about this? Uh, those who are immigrants and those who are citizens. Uh, what kind of judgments do we make there? Uh, how about those who are religious or those who are not religious or those who say they're, they're spiritual but not religious? What do we think about that? Um, how about people who are able-bodied or those who are disabled or a better term, uh, differently abled? How do we judge that and make uh, some definitions around those things? Uh, how about believers and unbelievers? How about the baptized and the unbaptized? How about uh, clergy and lay? I hate that distinction. Uh, and how about, how about this? How about uh, the sinner and the righteous? How about us and them? Labels can hurt. Labels can take things in a different direction than maybe we thought about, or maybe they actually go to the place where we wanted them to. 
Uh, I remember being a small kid. I went to a, a Lutheran day school, kindergarten through eighth grade. I remember uh, one thing we did, I think it was like first or second grade, we went around the class uh, as a way of data collection, uh, <coughs> what color people's hair was. Uh, so we had some blondes, uh, mostly Germans, no redheads, uh, mostly brown, one black. I had really dark hair as a kid. Uh, hard to believe, I know, but I, I did. Um, I remember feeling awkward about that. I mean, here I was, I was the one lefty. Uh, I was the one hair, kid with dark hair, and I was the one kid that had lots of vowels in his name uh, in a school full of German kids. Um, yeah, it felt weird. I mean, I got over it pretty quickly. I mean, I was well cared for and loved and cherished and nurtured and all those things by a number of communities, including my family and church and the class and teachers and stuff. But I wonder about, you know, how many people go through their whole lives this way? They live with a label. And no matter what happens, they're always working against that. They always have to somehow overcome that label. I mean, people that, you're lefty, you know. Uh, everything is designed for a right-handed person. You learn to live with it, it's fine but you just know it's something that's always there. Uh, or we like to think of ourselves as, as you know, these 21st century enlightened people, but you know, based on your gender, you get stuck in a, a, a pigeonhole of roles you're supposed to play, uh, even if you don't feel called to that, or good at it, or want to do it. Uh, it seems those distinctions are made. Uh, or, or people who are struggling with who they are as a person, in their sexuality, and what does that mean, and people judge harshly, and we saw the horror of what that can look like. Uh, last weekend in Orlando, people who just wanted to go out and be with their friends and ended up in this horrible tragedy. Uh, people who have moved to this country and want a new life, and yet they're always the stranger in this world that's, this country that's supposed to be full of opportunity. Uh, labels hurt, and they put us in the corner sometimes. What's so amazing in this passage from uh, Paul's letter to the Galatians is it's uh, counter to that. It's, uh, it's quite revolutionary, what Paul has to say. He says there's no distinction to be made uh, between Jew and Gentile. Now think about that. Uh, here's a person who grew up in a community where your ethnicity and your faith were so intertwined you really couldn't pull those two things apart. And now he's saying it doesn't it doesn't really even matter. Or uh, there's no difference between male or female. Uh, that was a very patriarchal society uh, with very clear roles and very <laughs> clear ways of determining what you did and how you did it and what rights you had and did not have. And he's saying, wait a minute, that's not what matters. Uh, that there's no distinction between slave or free. Uh, think of that. I mean, we have a whole history in our country of what that means that's <laughs> horrible, that we're still working up against. Uh, but even just think in a more broad sense, uh, really there's no economic division between class or people or, or work we can or can't do, uh, depending on our credentials. Uh, amazing. And he's not just saying there's some generic humanity that we're a part of either. He's not saying that. He's not saying that uh, your uniqueness doesn't matter. He's not saying your experiences don't matter. He's not saying who you are as a person don't matter. He's not saying that at all. But what he is saying is this, is the thing that really matters, the only label that matters at all, is that you are in Christ. That you are a person that God would die for. That you are a person that is raised from the dead, just as Christ is raised from the dead. That you are a person that is part of this new humanity that Jesus kind of kept referring to as the kingdom of God. Not that we don't bring who we are to that, of course we do. But the only label that matters is that of Christ. Uh, last weekend when Synod Assembly was finishing, one of my colleagues, his name is Angel Moreo, he is a mission developer up in Boston. Uh, he was to be the presider at the closing worship service, and he self-identifies as a gay Latino pastor. Uh, he found out about what happened in Orlando moments before the service, 
uh, and was thinking to himself, boy, we really should do something different than what we had planned. I mean, we should acknowledge this. He's like, me of all people, I really need to say something about this, uh, but didn't. You know, they had the plan, they had all, it was a big event, so they had everything on screens. Uh, you can't really shape it that fast, but he, he remor was remorseful afterwards that he couldn't do something about it or say something about it. Uh, and a few of us commented afterwards, you know, it's all right, none of us really did anything last weekend. I didn't find out about it until last Sunday afternoon. He wrote a couple blog posts this week, one of them sitting out where Mark's sitting, out in the back there by the round table. Um, he did a little reflection to say, you know, even in the church, we've done ourselves a disservice in the way we've, we've labeled people, in the way that we, we put people in a corner. Uh, we need to own that. We need to repent of that. Uh, we're, we're better than this. Because what, what's our identity? Our identity is one that's in, in Christ. That's what matters. That's who we are. Uh, that's who we are for the world. And he ends his piece by uh, quoting that great uh, civil rights song, you know, we shall overcome. In the end, there's hope. Uh, he got uh, some affirmation on that from among our community within the Synod, which was good. And then um, on the internet, not to use a label, but I will, he had a internet troll respond to his post, call him all sorts of mean, nasty things. And uh, several of us responded again to, I said something to the effect of, you know, you're a beloved, beautiful child of God. So is this idiot. <laughs> but still, <laughs> you are. So don't let him get to you. And keep on preaching. Labels, they hurt us. It can be a beautiful thing. To know who you are, and to know who you are is a person that is loved by God in Jesus Christ. Now today, uh, Lenny's going to come to the font, and we are going to celebrate that. Now you'll say to yourself, aha, but there's a distinction to be made, right, between the baptized and the unbaptized, and what are we going to say about that? I don't want to say anything about that today. <laughs> but I think we can say this. Right? Whatever happens to Lenny, whoever he grows up to be, uh, his primary identity is, is, is not Lenny, per se. It's not the son of John and Annie. It's not member of St. Paul Lutheran Church. It's not left-handed or right-handed or whatever. It's that he's in Christ. That's what matters. That's what matters for us. For all the sinister labels that people put on you, or perhaps you put on yourself at times. The only label that matters is that you are in Christ. Now this gospel passage, I think, illuminates this fairly nicely. So uh, here's the story, and there's tons of labeling that happens in this story, uh, perhaps even unintentionally. So. Jesus goes to this place where the Gerasenes live. Now, nobody's really quite sure where that is, but it's somewhere on the other side of the Sea of Galilee from where they were. And from what they can say, they think, is it was some kind of trading post, uh, mostly dominated by the Romans. It was kind of a Gentile town. Or at least if you had a label that mattered, that's who you were. So he gets to this village, town, trading post, whatever it is, and he's met by a welcoming committee, which is not anybody from town. Uh, it's not any of his own people. It's not fellow disciples. It's not people who are interested in him. Uh, it's not even the Gentiles. It's this man that's labeled, at least in my Bible, in the heading, the Gerasene demoniac. Yikes. Now, what kind of labels are thrown on this guy? Um, it's, we're told that he's, he's naked. Um, that's not meant to be flattering. Um, it's humiliating. It's kind of dehumanizing. Uh, that when he has these fits, whatever they are, um, people chain him down, they tie him up. Uh, that's dehumanizing too. Uh, he's been forced to live among the dead. He lives in the tomb, in the cemetery, in the graveyard. 
Those are the only people that will accept him, right? Um, Jesus asks him his name. He never actually gives his name. It's the demon who responds. Legion. Uh, you might recognize that to be like a military term. Uh, we looked it up Wednesday at our breakfast club group. Uh, it, it's like the elite special ops force of the Roman Empire, their army. Right? So there, there's, some, there's some symbolism here. Uh, regardless of what we can say about this, this demon, I mean, this, this thing, this evil, this label, has somehow occupied this person's life. And it's the only way people will relate to him now. Um, it's a lot with that. Uh, there's these pigs. Jesus casts the demon out into the pigs. Now, our first reaction is to say, well, I hope the farmers have insurance, right? <laughs> um, but it's, it's not about that at all. Uh, who, keeping kosher, would have pigs, right? This is clearly a group of outsiders. Jesus is washing that away. They drown him in the lake. There's some symbolism there too. All these labels washed away. All these, all these labels drowned in the water. What is the outcome of this story? Uh, the people who, who watch this, they go gather everybody together so they can, they can see it too. And they're, they're scared. And why are they scared? It's because the, the labels are gone. What happens? Uh, this man, we still don't know his name. Why? Because he's in Christ. And that's all that matters. But what do we know about him? He's clothed. He's had his humanity restored. He's uh, articulate. He wants to tell people about his own experience and what that means. He wants to sit at the foot of Jesus, and yet Jesus sends him home. We're also told he's in his right mind. I wish I could get there occasionally. <laughs> there are no more labels in Christ. The only label that matters in your life and in the people's lives that you touch is the love that Jesus gives all of humanity and calls us into and calls us to share with others. Uh, this summer across our church in our different uh, varying camps, including our camp, Camp Calumet, there's a uh, curriculum that's called the Jesus Way. And it's about learning how to live in the life of Jesus. And one of the pieces of that is a little blessing that I was uh, shown and thought it was uh, actually pretty, pretty nice. So yes, I used labels because there is the pulpit side and the piano side, and it's just to help you out. But if you look on your green sheet, uh, it's there. And what I'd like to invite you to do is to stand, if you would please, And what I would like you to do as we say this is let's turn towards the middle so we're all facing each other.